My name is Marco and I'm here to say I like your show in a major way. And I stand up and clap because I have seen Millie can rap. Yeah, all right. Nicely yeah. done. Who taught you how to do that? <laughs> yeah, you teach me that. That's that true, was everybody. cool. Yeah. yeah. Hello. Hi, Trent. So, um, can you introduce yourself a little bit? Sure. Please. Yeah. Uh, my name is Trent and uh, Trent Pansy. I am uh, originally from Michigan in the US, but um, four and a half years ago I moved to Finland and I live in Tampere. And um, uh, what else? I, uh, I'm an improviser. I, I teach, I, uh, I coach, I tour, I do shows. And I've been doing that here in Europe now for four years, going on four years. and. Uh, I travel with a couple of different teams and um, also sort of solo and individually. Um, what else? Oh, I produce the Finland International Improv Festival. Um, we're doing that for our fourth year now this year. Um, that's in the last week of May. So, I think we will catch that up later. Sure. So first, uh, yesterday was on the main stage here in Amsterdam. Yeah. It's a festival and play with Ryan Miller. Yep. Yeah, uh, we have Millican Rap. Yeah, Millican Rap is our two-person show uh, where we take um, freestyle improvisation and freestyle hip-hop and we sort of throw them in together and we do a um, about a 35-40 minute show um, where we do scenes and do stories and do character work but also at different points one of us will start beatboxing and the other one will start rapping and then we'll kind of go back and forth. So. Yeah, I really enjoyed uh, to see that because uh, you challenged each other so to mm. sing and that's uh, it's quite nice to see yeah, yeah it's really fun yeah. yeah it's a fun show yeah um do we have different styles to rap for um that actually yeah uh ryan and i kind of go a little bit differently ryan um i think his <clears throat> his love of hip-hop was completely separate from his love of improv for a long time and he just likes to freestyle just go on and on and on and on and on and i learned about I didn't really get into hip-hop until I saw a different hip-hop improv show um, and then I started listening to it more and learning more and really falling in love with it too and um, so I do more of the like sort of like the setup payoff directly trying to say something from the beginning and Ryan will just kind of keep going and going um, until he gets to a point that he wasn't really necessarily planning on but we both end up that's kind of the beautiful thing about doing the rap is that you because it's rhyming you often might uh, if you say, oh, I came here and I'm going to win, I'm going to do it just like that dolphin. Well, now we brought up dolphins, and so that will be added somehow into the show um, because we say things to end up rhyming, and then, of course, that takes us down a new path that we wouldn't have gone down if we didn't have the rhyming inside the show. So. Yeah, that's uh, cool. Uh, for me, it was also interesting to see that you... Uh, sing and mm. the singing is not the end of the scene so because it's in the middle somewhere mm. and you play after that in, in a way and you use also the singing to tell stories yeah so that's yeah there's a couple different ways that we do it sometimes uh, and of course it just kind of depends on the scene um, but sometimes uh, we'll uh, start rapping as the result of something that's happened or sometimes it'll be if one person is telling something sometimes instead of just talking it's more fun to explain things through rhyme um, and oftentimes we'll continue the scene after that or sometimes we'll just end it if it's yeah. on a big on a good big word sometimes we'll start a scene look at each other and we'll, one of us will just start rapping without having any preps so we just kind of use it in different ways so, and sometimes we'll go where uh, one person will be the only one rapping and the other one will beatbox and sometimes we'll back and forth a little bit too. So. Yeah. Do you have plans to uh, integrate other things from hip hop? So there's a, a, a DJing thing or maybe a dance we haven't, things? Uh, we haven't really thought about it. One of the things, uh, this show kind of occurred relatively organically. We didn't um, put a lot of uh, time and energy into creating the show, it just kind of created itself. And uh, we live in, I live in Finland and he lives in Amsterdam, so we don't really get to rehearse it all that very often. Um, so I think we'll probably keep it as, we don't want it to be a show that is only appealing to people who like rap and we don't want it to be a show that's only appealing to people who like improv. We want it to be an improv show that has some rapping in it. Um, and the only other element other than rapping that we include that I might say is maybe a little bit hip hoppy is that we wear 
sort of I happen to be wearing because we just did a photo shoot. We wear uh, a shirt and a tie, and we have these gray hoodies that we wear on top of them. So it's kind of we're presentational, but we have a little bit of a wrap costume, which helps us kind of get in the mood. So yeah, for me also cool and interesting that you don't use that uh, typically ghetto slang. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, because you use it as uh, as a storytelling element. Or, right. Um, yeah, and we try our best mm -hmm. um, to if we're in a character and we have to rap, we try to rap as that character. And of course, that means they would say different words differently. Um, they might if I'm playing like a southern uh an american from the south uh character i might rap in a slow manner and give a little drawl and try and keep my accent as much as i can um, it's a lot of things to kind of put all onto each other trying to keep a character keep rapping and also tell part of the story and continue things so but it's a lot of fun yeah, yeah cool um, do we have plans with Millie Can Rap? Is there a plan to move around to festivals? Yeah, or? that's actually, so we, we have done, we've done this show quite a few times and we've done it all over Europe already. Um, we were in Brussels, uh, two, three different shows in uh, Finland, in Helsinki and then in Tampere, and then uh, Amsterdam, Barcelona, Improv Festival, and now back here at Amsterdam again. So um, we've, our goal is to continue sort of touring with it and traveling with it. Then we also teach workshops along the side of it. So, um, cause Ryan and I can both teach really good, just regular improv workshops. But then of course I also teach this sort of elements of how to do the hip hop stuff that the class that you took in Barcelona. Yeah. Um, and and I really can recommend that so, yeah. because in three hours you can rap. And for me as a, not native speaker, it's mm. quite hard, but it works. Yeah. So it's, and, and yeah. yeah, it's I just give like the sort of the basic tools so that you can learn how it works and then you can do it again in your own language, whatever's easier for you. Um, uh, but yeah, and I'm teaching that workshop again here at Impro Amsterdam. And uh, yeah, Ryan and I are actually really trying to start, um, now that we've gotten some traction and we know the show is really fun, uh, we're trying to start taking it on the road a little more and doing it with a package of shows and workshops and having fun with uh, wherever it is we go with the people there. So. Yeah. yeah. So let's switch to Finland. Sure. Um, you play with Yada Yada? That's right, yeah. So I moved to Finland 2010 and after about six months of living there, um, well I had well, I have a degree in theater from the US, uh, a bachelor's degree in theater arts. And after um, learning everything I could about the theater, I moved to Chicago where I studied and performed improv for four years. And I started teaching a little bit there. And then when I moved to Finland, um, I kind of thought my improv days were behind me. And I realized after five or six months that I couldn't not, I couldn't not be improvising. So um, I went to a little improv festival, um, just like a local teams, um, a little bit far away from where I live and I met some people from Tampere from where I live and we got together and formed a team and we're called Yada Yada Improv and uh, we've been uh, together now for three and a half years. Yeah, three and a half years doing shows. Um, we do shows twice a month in Tampere. We also do shows all around Finland and we've traveled. We've performed in Estonia. We went to the Chicago Improv Festival uh, two or three years ago and then um, very recently they were also at the Barcelona Improv Festival. Uh, and we're also starting to pick up a little more with them too and get to be a little better known and we um, for the three four years now it'll be the fourth year we've been producing our own improv festival um, where we the original idea was just um, hey let's bring in and one or two instructors from outside and then invite two or three teams and now it's uh, five days with uh, usually 60 or 70 improvisers and instructors from all over the world um, in our little pocket of Tampere, which is a pretty small town in uh, the middle of nowhere in Finland. So, Yeah, first time I have uh, read about it was uh, the slogan was so cool. It was, we have improv, we have uh, fun, we have sauna, mm -hmm. something like that. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. really laughed yeah. hard about it. Yeah, and our, uh, my whole reason, the. The way that I sort of, um, so I founded FIF and I'm sort of the artistic director as well and my goal for it is that it almost feels, and people say this is how it is, that it almost feels like a summer camp. Some festivals are arranged for the audience members, some festivals are arranged just for workshops and some festivals are arranged for a bit of a mix. I think our festival in Finland is very much for the improvisers. 
we're there to get to know each other. Everyone stays in the same hostel, and we hope that the teams that come, they can stay the entire time. Um, and we formed this cool bond. We also started something that we called Mixer Shows, where we would take random people from random teams and throw them all on stage together. And everyone at our festival uh, who's a performer gets to play in a mixer show with people from different teams. And now I'm seeing, uh, not that we're the first ones to do that, but that's been a highlight of our festival. And I've been seeing that replicated in other festivals as well. Like this idea of, you know, uh, nine people on stage, all from different countries, all from different improv teams, all yeah. have never performed together and then having them do a show by themselves. Uh, it's it's really fun. It's a it's a lot of fun. Yeah. I really like that approach as well. I don't know. I would like call it community mm. style festivals a yeah. little bit. Yeah. Because it's not that you have that front teaching thing that uh, you get a group and you have to watch that and yeah. uh, you you can't interact really with uh, other people. Yeah. So and I like I like to do that and have a mixture to have great uh, players mm -hmm. and then you can learn from them but you can play with them as well right. so that's yeah. cool yeah and we're yeah. always sort of toying uh, since we started it we've been visiting more and more festivals and we're sort of seeing what we like from different places and seeing what would fit into ours and we're always toying with the idea of integrating different kinds of things um, I would love to have and I know there's a couple of these here sort of a like a Finland improv retreat where we go in the middle of the woods um, in the middle of the summertime when the sun doesn't set and we bring, let's say, 30 improvisers and form three teams of 10 and they all just play as a group each night and have a different teacher each day mm -hmm. and just learn new formats and different things all together. Um, but that's a project for probably a little later <laughs> down the road. Um, but yeah, like since so my whole life I've always had theater was a present and um, international sort of... Uh, Interculturalness has always been part of my life because we've always hosted exchange students in my home. Um, it started when I was nine. We had just one uh, from Germany, and then slowly we added more and more. And I think the year I left home to go to college when I was 18, my mom had six kids from four different countries living with her. And now she usually has two or three from different places. And it's just been a huge part of my life. We've always traveled, and I was an exchange student in South America, an exchange student in Scotland, and my wife is Finnish, so I've always had this sort of intercultural identity, I guess, and so I wanted to sort of find a way to blend that with improv, and um, these festivals are a great way of doing that. You get to have fun with people from all around the world, and it's funny now that we come to these festivals after I meet somebody one place, then I see them again at the next time. It's like, oh, it's like seeing yeah. an old friend, even though you don't see each other, you know, very often. It's nice. It's like a little family that we're sort of starting to form. So, yeah, it feels like, uh, yeah, for me, the same. Mm -hmm. So, seeing that people and yeah, it's yeah. cool. It's really cool. Yeah, and I feel really privileged. Mm -hmm. I should just say, uh, I, being an American um, and living in Europe now, sort of, I feel really privileged to sort of have been able to become part of this as a person who stays here because a lot of times there are visiting improv teams or instructors from like here I think there's people from San Francisco and people from New York uh, and they are here at the festival but then they go back home uh, and I think it's kind of cool that I'm sort of involved a little bit more because I live here and I get to see these people a little more often that's really fun so. yeah what's uh, the status of the festival for this year you open the applications for yeah, so right now we're, um, until, I want to say, February 20th, don't hold me to that, that might not be right, um, we're accepting applications for instructors, and then after we know the instructors, then we open up the applications for teams, because I think a big part of our festival is we try to pick different types of instructors who complement each other so that there's a lot of different options, and then when people see what the workshops are, then they we want that to be a drawing factor for them to apply, not just so that they can come to Finland and perform. We want to make sure that we find people who are there to also learn and live improv for a week. So um, after we pick our instructors, we'll announce them and then we'll open up the, um, the call for teams, I think, at the, the last week of February. So, and then that'll be open for about yep. a month. Is there some exchange uh, between festivals in Europe? Something I don't know what to share? Yeah, unofficially there is actually. Um, uh, a lot of festivals will um, maybe 
so for instance, I think it's the Improv Fest Ireland and Barcelona Improv. They're back to back. They're like one week and then the next week, and they promote each other. They sort of say, yeah, we're go to that festival and come to our festival, or come to our festival and go there. Um, uh, but there's a lot of, I think there's a lot of, s not the same teachers, that's not what I mean, but there's a lot of the same sort of um, people and the same, like I've seen t people teaching at Barcelona that we hired at FIF and someone came to FIF and was taught by them and they were like, oh, we have to bring you to our festival. So in that way, there's definitely a lot of sense there. And also the producers of a lot of the festivals, we are in a big Facebook group and we all kind of chat and talk and sort of see who does what how, and we try not to do too much of the same exact format and the same exact feeling, but of course sharing ideas and tips, and of course we're, if possible we try not to have um, like big festivals at the same time, because then it's just yeah. you know harder to make decisions and things. So. And I've got to say, we've had um, an overwhelming response for people that want to come to our festival in Finland and every year it gets a little more difficult to choose uh, who we accept both as teachers and as teams because we uh, get to know the people more when we go to another festival or when we travel and meet them and it, I just want to bring all of my friends and have everyone come all together but it's, it, it's really hard to sort of um, pick and choose when you know the people even more than if it's just you know a bunch of blank faces that don't mean anything to you. It's a little easier yeah. to, to choose from those. We have some those. kind of rules that you say nobody can be twice there in a no, row or something like that? No, not at all. Like that. We actually, uh, for the first couple of years, we actually made it a point to try and bring back people. Um, I think the first year we had Rod Benzev was teaching and then he came back to teach the second year and then the second year someone came back to teach who was a performer the first year. Um, and we sort of try to sort of have a bit of continuity if we can, but this year we had the theater that we've been using for the past three years is going under renovation. So we're in a brand new theater and it's way bigger and I think it'll change the feeling a little bit of our festival, but in a good way. And so we're going to sort of wipe the slate clean and look at everybody with fresh eyes, no matter who applies. And, uh, actually something that we did this year, which, I don't know, some people have found it maybe bothering, bothersome, but um, I don't. Uh, we asked, we're asking all of our instructors to film just a very short YouTube video of themselves, introducing themselves, saying why they might want to come to the festival, and uh, describing what their workshop would be. And um, I did that for a very specific reason, because I want to sort of feel the vibe and feel if you feel like someone that would fit our festival. We don't pay incredible amounts for our teachers to come, but we do fly them up to Finland. We do take care of their accommodation. We take care of um, their breakfast and some other things like that. And then again, we also pay them for the workshops that they teach. So um, for us, and I've had some people sort of say, oh, I'm not gonna do that just to come and teach at a festival. Well, then I don't want you to come and teach at my festival. Yeah. I want someone there who is willing to who has sort of the attitude of like, oh yeah, I want to go and have fun and I'm willing to film a you know, one minute YouTube video to do that. So it's kind of, and it's fun. I've been watching them and you get a chance to, you really feel like you know their personalities and a little more like you can mm -hmm. feel yeah. who they are and if they're going to fit into the sort of overall vibe that we want to create, so. Yeah. yeah. Um, do we have visions for your festival or you go year by year? Uh, kind of year by year, but overall, um, especially after visiting some other festivals, I've decided uh, with our artistic committee, we've kind of talked and we don't want it to get too big. Um, we don't want to be elite or anything like that because we're certainly not. Um, but we do want to try and um, make it, keep that community feeling. And I find at festivals where there's 100 or 130, 140 improvisers performing and participating, that's so many that you don't get to spend any time with them and you don't get to really form relationships or bonds because there's just, it's an overwhelming number of people and performers. Um, when we were in Chicago with Yada Yada for the Chicago Improv Festival, it's a fantastic city. I love Chicago. I live there. Um, but the festival itself, there wasn't much of a sense of community. Um, and we didn't meet very many other performers other than the other international teams. Um, and that was great. But at the same time, it would have been nice to sort of get to vibe with some of the American and Canadian performers that were just there. Um, yeah. But everyone's spread out in a huge city. So uh, we try to keep ours. I think we'll keep it around 50 or 60 participants and then um, still keep everyone hopefully in the same hostel and hanging out because all of the reviews about 
how we've set up our festival say that that's one of the best parts is that everyone's sort of in the same place and going through the thing together so yeah it sounds really good for me as well mm -hmm. so because i've seen the program of the chicago improv festival mm -hmm. and the, the program i think they have eight slots with yeah uh, i don't know There's 50 teams in yeah. every slot so yeah. it's really it's, it's, it's a book full of yeah. dates so yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and the interesting thing in Chicago, and I'm not trying to, I love Chicago, the Chicago Improv Festival is great, but you can also go to Chicago just for a week and see as much improv there because they have 10 improv theaters with shows going on every day of the week already. So you yeah. can see, you know, at two 10 or three shows a night. Right. With in different two slots. Two or three and, groups yeah. at every show. So, so yeah. any, any week of the year, you can go there and yeah. see 20, 30 improv shows in a week. Um, so, of course, the, they bring in special guests and things like that, so it's really nice too. But, um, yeah, we like to keep our festival nice and like a close-knit group. And, the, again, there the problem is if there's only 50 or 60 people, people want to come back and they apply again, they get really excited. And then it's like, oh, I'm sorry if we can't take everybody. We want to take everybody, but obviously we can't do that. So, yeah. But it's fun. Yeah, it's one of my favorite things. It's, it's the only thing that uh, I really do that... Uh, we spend so much time on and no one takes any income from it, no one gets paid for doing any of it, it's all volunteer work, volunteer work, and we definitely wouldn't put all this time and energy into it if it wasn't, you know, worth it for us too, so, yeah. Yeah, and I think as a volunteer, you also feel that it's, it's a cool thing, you work for a really yeah. that big vision that, uh, yeah. yeah, it's yeah. not, uh, it's not, um, will happen if you don't have that group and that yeah. team yeah. spirit, so yeah, mm -hmm. that's cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah um, so my questions are finished. Do you have something to say? What you... Uh, I don't know. Uh, thanks for having me. This has been, the more that I travel Europe and um, the more that I sort of poke my head into this, uh, this international improv community here, the more I enjoy it and I hope I uh, keep finding ways to sort of travel around and teach and perform and learn and grow with as many uh, new improvisers and of course same improvisers who I already know because it's a uh, it's a really great little community so yeah thanks okay. for thanks for having me yeah thanks for yeah. coming by my pleasure so then folks on the internet thank you for watching us and uh, yeah we say bye bye see you